Before we judge a minority of Hindus for reacting to offensive posts, we should understand something of Hindu history. Unlike other societies, Hindu civilization has never sought to go out and conquer other nations. Mm. Mm, and except, I don't know, I heard like some of them want Bengal, you know, Bangladesh back. Isn't that not true? I don't know. Okay, Sajib is saying she's married, Armin. Again, again, as we learned at the beginning of this video, Kali is not limited by the ex expectations of the, and the norms of society. Okay? If the expectations of society is that Kali should not be with other men just because she's married, Kali will tell you to go screw yourself. She could do whatever she wants. If she wants to have sex outside of marriage, the only problem is that I'm not. I'm. I'm pretty sure that as soon as I have sex with Kelly, she's gonna have, just behead me right after, just for fun. So that's my. That's a serious concern of mine. But other than that, she could do whatever she wants. They were in fact a source of refuge for others who were being persecuted. Through the ages, India has been a land that has been ravaged by outside forces. Muslim invasion saw the destruction of temples and many violent atrocities. I keep I, I keep getting to, uh, lectured about this. People are like Armin, don't make fun of Kali. We were abused by Muslims for centuries. I'm like, how are these two related? And like, well, you have to understand that because of the abuse that we got for centuries, we're so defensive, and this is what you should expect. You could, we are so defensive, and we have our guards up, and that's why if you make fun of Cali, we're just going to react this way because of the abuse that we have experienced. Uh, first of all, it wasn't you that experienced that, uh, all that uh, abuse. It was your ancestors. Second of all, that one does not follow. It, is, it does not follow, okay? You were abused by m many Muslims for centuries, and now you want to be like, Nobody could talk about your goddesses for some reason. Um, Ex-Muslim Uzbek, $5 super chat. Thank you so much, Ex-Muslim Uzbek, saying what really concerns me is that we now live in the era of alternative facts, alternative reasoning to justify nationalism and anti-intellectualism. And anti yeah, and that's what Jordan Peterson does as well, right? This is happening. Um, actually, to be fair, though, uh, ex-Muslim is back. This is not new. I mean, we have been dealing with this. I mean, that's how Islam, Christianity, Hinduism, and Judaism, and Buddhism, that's all alternative facts. So we don't live in the era of alternative facts. It was always the era of alternative facts. We, but we're still fighting against it. Let me see. Oh, hold on. Why do these people just go back to the Muslim rule and not the time when they are, ooh, I can't say that word, where the Aris, where the Aris were fighting native Indian tribes and enslaving them. Um, Quiet Renaissance is saying the, what? Cholas were the only Hindu kings to invade lands outside the Indian subcontinent. Most of them were busy fighting each other. Okay, interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, but I'm pretty sure if the history of Hindus were like that they did go out and invade other lands, they would be like, oh, we're so proud of our invasions. We were so powerful. Look at our empire that we built. Okay, so if this is how it works. If your ancestors didn't invade any lands, you would be like, oh, look how peaceful we are. We were invaded by these abusers and we never did the invading. It was just in the invading was done upon us. But if you did do the invading, you would be like, oh, look how powerful we were. We captured these lands and we took them in. Look how proud, look how powerful our ancestors were. So you would just switch the narrative if it was the other way around. Turtle is saying, Armin, you need to say this part of their argument is like, yeah, this is why I'm doing the BDSM image with the Cali whipping Muhammad. Yes, exactly. Yo, uh, thank you so much, Tara, for reminding me. Uh, 50 Danish crowns. I remembered the currency. I remembered the currency. 50 Danish crowns. Thank you so much. Yes, guys. I th remember which one of the art was like. So the next one is Sita and Cali, and then is Ma uh, Muhammad and. Um, um, was it? I think I'm going to do Muhammad and Ram. Muhammad and Ram. And then it's, Fat no, yeah. And then the one after is Muhammad tied up in very beautiful, you know, bondage. And Kali is whipping Muhammad, okay? And the, the entire reasoning behind that art was the gift 
to Hindus because Hindus are keep on saying like, hey, we were dominated by Muslims. <laughs> so sad. We were dominated many years ago and we're still upset about it today even though it wasn't us. It was some other people that we have never met. Um, but we somehow feel it today. Um, but they keep... And then I say like, you know what? Well, let's flip the narrative. Let's have... Kali dominate over Muhammad, okay? So Muhammad would be the sub and Kali would be the dumb. And this is like exactly that, you know, that is a gift to him. I think, again, if Hindus are offended by that, because in, in, that, in that one, Kali is going to be fierce and she's going to be dominating over Muhammad. If Hindus do not, like, I've, I'm, all these people that came after me and attacked me, when we make that art, they should be like, you know what, Armin? Thank you. Thank you. This is something that we could enjoy, actually. Like, if you don't jizz in your pants, as soon as that art is released, all these ha Hindus that got offended, if you don't instantly jizz in your pants as soon as I drop that, then you're a failure. You're a failure to humanity. Um, <laughs> yeah, I remembered the currency. Over centuries. The British not only ruled India but attempted to destroy the Hindu identity by changing the historical narrative and enforcing a Western Christian worldview. They created a colonial inferiority complex that still exists. The consequences of British rule resulted in the ripping apart of India into different nations. Yeah, I, it, don't some Indians think like you know Pakistan is supposed to be at one point come back to India? Is that not a thing? Causing more social atrocities and unrest. Even today, there are Hindus falling prey to Christian missionaries and Muslim preachers that are out to convert. Yeah, it's called freedom of religion. They get to preach. You, uh, hey, I have a tip for you fighting against these missionaries, uh, Mus the Muslim what Muslim Dawa people. Muslim preachers and Christian missionaries, right? You know how you fight against Muslim preachers and Christian missionaries? And like, oh, how could we stop them? The best way to stop them is... Let's go back, let's go back. Like, it's yeah, reason! Yeah. It's reason! That's your only defense that you're dismissing. This is the only way you can stop them. But you don't know how insist, they insist on reason. Yep, there's no other way. There's no other way to fight against Islam and Christianity, but you don't like that weapon, so you try to fight their cancer with your Hinduism cancer, and you're going to inflict, in, in, in the name of removing them, you're going to inflict the cancer on the entire Indian subcontinent. So congratulations, you just replaced one monster with another. I'm sorry. Well, hold on, what do we have here? The Great Temple. KT is saying the Hindutva outright denies the. Okay, this is not relevant to what we're saying right now. Yeah, I'm gonna. I want to do a video on that, but I the video that people sent me in the uh, in the Discord server. By the way, link to our Discord server in the description uh, is like way too long and way too boring for me to cover here. Like, it, we, if we don't make these live streams a bit interesting of interesting of interesting videos. Nobody's going to watch them. They're out to convert. The great temples do not have autonomy. Unlike other religious institutions in India, they are shackled to state control. While it is important that Hindus do not become enslaved by self-pity, these factors mm. cannot be naively brushed aside as forgotten events of the past. Guys, again, I tell you, don't you use history to learn how, what works and what doesn't work. Do not use history to define your identity, to fi to to find uh, you, to hold grudges against other people. Is the past is the past. You you study it so you can learn from it, or you study it just because you enjoy it. You don't study history as a way to to d define who you are, and define what your people stand for today because of the crimes or the accomplishments of people that have nothing to do with you. Just because you share a land with them, and just because you, you, they're your ancestors, that doesn't mean you have to be tied to them forever, okay? The past is the past. You learn from it. You don't dismiss it. You learn from it. 
But if your identity is based on events that happened years ago, then you're not discovering, you're not truly discovering yourself, okay? You're an individual, independent from the land that you were born from, and, and independent from the DNA and the blood of the people that, that came before you. It has nothing to do with you. You get to define yourself, you unshackle yourself from the land, and unshackle yourself from the blood. You define you. You get to build your own identity, and you have a complete freedom. You have complete freedom on how you built your identity, independent from the history of your ancestors. And for you to think the history of your ancestors defines you in any way, and the crimes committed against your ancestors somehow makes you, that makes it seem like, makes it other people be indebted to you, or the accomplishments of the people that were not you, all of a sudden give you deserves any credit for it. Or other people deserve, need to be ashamed because of their ancestors or people that did something in the land that they also happened to be born in. This is all dumb. This is all dumb. This is all stupid. It has no... You know how... You know you would realize that this is all dumb. You would realize this is all extremely idiotic. If you use some reason that you Quality also dismissed here. Hey, look at this. We're coming back to here. Oh, uh, yeah. If you insisted on reason, maybe you would have known how dumb it is for you to be like, Oh, we cannot dismiss the Hindus today are upset of Muslims today because Muslims 100 years ago did this to the Hindus 100 years ago. They tell me that, Armin, you need to be grateful to Hindus. I'm like, why? Because hundreds of years ago, Hindus saved the Parsis from Islamic invaders and we gave them home. Like, yeah, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. And guess what? The people who did the saving, it wasn't you. <laughs> it wasn't you. What the hell are you talking about? That's the, what the hell are you talking about? Again, you would realize that if you weren't, if your mind was in, if you were more interested in individualism rather than collectivism, if you weren't so tribal, and if you weren't a goddamn idiot, to be quite frank. Hold on. Yeah, maybe insisting on reason is something we should be advocating. institutions in India, they are shackled to state control. While it is important that Hindus do not become enslaved by... Oh, look at this idiot. Look at this idiot. Armin Chill, calm down. Some being hysterical. We're atheists, not religious morons. Oh yeah, because only religious people get to get passionate about their views. Oh yeah, sure. Okay. Don't, we're not religious morons. No, we're not. But you are a mor you're an atheist moron if you think that I can't be passionate about what I'm saying. You're, no, we're not religious morons, and we're not atheist morons. You're an atheist, and you're an atheist moron. Yeah, you don't have to be religious to be a moron. Yeah, religious people don't have a monopoly over passion, and religious people also don't have a mo monopoly over being morons. And you are proof that you could be an atheist and an absolute moron at the same time. Self-pity. These factors cannot be naively brushed aside as forgotten events of the past. The injustices simmer in the Hindu psyche, making them feel like they have to take a stand for their tradition. But having said this... Wait, what? Making them feel like they have to take a stand for their tradition. Well, Hindu psyche... Wait, hold on. Exit. The injustice simmer in the Hindu psyche. Again, yeah, okay, this is a problem. This is an idiotic problem. Oh, like, oh, my, it's in my psyche. You're basically experiencing trauma over generations, even though you were not there to experience that trauma. If other people's trauma that who are dead is simmering in your psyche, then you need psychological help. Or you just need to apply some reason to be able to know how, how moronic you're being. Mikey, making them feel like they have to take a stand for their tradition. Yeah, there it is. But having said... You could t again, I will... T here's the thing, you don't have to even be handed to make a stand for traditions. You can preserve traditions 
without preserving the crappy ideas. And you don't even have to be Hindu to do that. You could be, you could be a Hindu. Okay, here's the tip. You could be like, oh my God, this tradition in Ukraine is dying. And I don't want this tradition to die. This is a beautiful tradition. You could be concerned about that. It has nothing, it doesn't have to do anything with the land that you're born in. Said this, taking a stand should not involve online persecution. It should not oh, descend good. into threats of violence. Fine. Apart Good. from being wrong and immoral, such tactics only serve to make the problem worse. Mm. They only turn the abuser into a righteous victim of blasphemy laws. Okay, so the reason why you shouldn't attack me and send me death threats and uh, go after my family and make pornographic images of my family and, um, and all that is because that you're going to turn the abuser into a righteous victim of blasphemy laws. I think that should be your least concern. You know, so your, your only concern should be like, yeah, this is just bad. Yeah, sending, say, guy, look at me, look at me. Sending death threats to people is bad, okay? If, you're, if you see people send death threats and you're like, oh, no, that's so horrible. That's going to make him look like a victim. Yeah, your priorities are not in the right order, if that's what you're thinking about. If that even crosses your mind, you should just be like, you know, death threats are bad. That's it.